Judge Stephen Schwebel served 19 years on the ICG, three of them as president. He gave us a first-hand insight into the court's unique process of arriving at a judgment where, basically, 15 judges have to come up with a majority position. Would you explain that process of arriving at a judgment? Uh, it's not a simple one. Uh, in this case, uh, the governments of Belize and Guatemala have prepared what's called a special agreement, which submits the case to the court for, for its judgment. And that special agreement sets out that uh, each party shall have six months to prepare uh, its pleadings. The, the, the first pleading is called a memorial, and the counter pleading, which would come six months later, is a counter memorial and then there may be further pleadings in writing if the parties so choose the judges of the court after the conclusion of the written arguments are charged with studying those written arguments the judges read all that material then there's the phase of oral argument in which uh, each party has appointed a team led by an agent who represents the government, and he has a flotilla of supporting lawyers, and the uh, most practiced among them uh, will be chosen to argue uh, before the court. Uh, then the uh, court retires. It will hold a preliminary deliberation just among the members of the court, with the registrar of the court present, uh, and look at a list of questions which the president of the court prepares as a guide to the deliberation. And each member of the court will express his views uh, on those questions. Uh, and after a debate among the judges of the court, uh, after they've all participated in the deliberation, the most junior judge, most recently elected, the youngest is the most junior, speaks first, which is often a bit frightening to that new judge, and the president of the court speaks last. And at the end of that deliberation, one can see which direction the court is moving. It could be unanimous, it could be split down the middle, any variation thereof. And at that point, uh, the court will elect a drafting committee to draft the judgment, which represents the majority view. As former president, Schwebel sat on many of those drafting committees, and he did so famously on a relevant border dispute, the Libya-Chad case. Libya was an occupation of an enormous area in the south of Chad, which Chad claimed was territory of Chad. There was a treaty uh, which delineated the boundary between the two. L Libya came up with all sorts of creative arguments as to whether that boundary was not the boundary that the court should apply. It had brilliant in council, uh, led by Derek Ballard of Cambridge University, a colleague of Sir Eli Lauderpacht. In the end, the court virtually unanimously decided that the governing treaty settled the dispute. Uh, and there are a number of cases in international law which give immediate and lasting effect to a boundary agreed upon by the parties, even though there may not be succession to the treaty which created the boundary. Once the boundary is agreed upon, proclaimed, there it is. There is a disposition to give it continuing force, independent of the life of the treaty itself. 
And Judge Schwebel says that is an expression of the court's preference always for boundary stability. And if you look at the jurisprudence of the International Court of Justice, it has given primacy to the importance of the stability of international boundaries for one strong and obvious reason. If boundaries are not respected, the prospects of warfare among states of the world are that much greater.